of this song is the Wildwood Flower. Hello, everybody. This is Bobby. Ladies and gentlemen. My name is Drew Doherty of Cold Meal Productions. And this is uh, Bobby and Drew are terrible people. It is. Yeah. And uh, Drew, I'd like to like to start off this uh, this session of our podcast uh, with, with a couple shout outs. What? A, uh, first. What do you mean? Hold on. Like that dumb shit they do on TRL and that dumb shit yeah. that. Yeah. Like every time you put a stupid asshole in front of a microphone, it goes, ah, I just want to shout out to my fucking... Like, are you talking about that? That exactly. We're going to do that. Uh, we? Yeah. You are going to do no, that. No, you and I. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Doherty of Cold Meal Productions. I am not partaking in any shout out. Thank you very much. Bobby, the floor is yours. Okay, well. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Cold uh, Meal Productions and Terrible People would like to thank uh, <laughs> our friends. Our friends. Your Melanie. friends. I, I don't, <laughs> they're your friends. Our, no, they're totally our friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. They're no. our only listeners, probably, too. Isn't that crazy that, that 100% of our listening audience is, is female? Right now. Yeah. Well. But isn't that weird? Don't you think that's a little weird? That's, uh, it's definitely weird. Yeah. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, I try not to focus on it. I try to stick to our, uh, I, you just kind of made me feel like that we got like a Martha Stewart, uh, Rachel Ray kind of vibe going on that, you know. I, I, we I, definitely have that. I can. I'm like really upset, you know, with the realization that that's what we are. Yeah. We're like Rachel Ray, but with like a leather jacket with studs in it. That's all we are, really. Okay, I can you see. You know what that. I mean? Like a like Rachel Ray, and she's like, "No, I'm hardcore," but she's. So anyway. Very deflating, Bob. Anyway, Mel and, and Jeanette, thanks. I guess. For what? I I don't know. Just hey, thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening? You kind of brought me down. I don't know what to say now. They don't thank us for doing the show. Why are, why, 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 why are we thanking them for listening? Dude, they thank me at least three times a day for doing this shit. For doing, the, for doing this? Yeah. Why do they thank you? I don't know, because... Like, Who the fuck are you? My name is Drew Doherty, and I am a representative... Of Cold Meal Productions. Why are they thanking you? Well, because my name is Bobby Rolls. And I am a representative of Cold Meal Productions. And, um... But I don't have to tell people that. People know that. Because, uh... They want to know that. See, you tell people your name every time we do this show. Because people don't know who the fuck you are. I let, I let the work speak for itself. People know who Bobby Rolls is based on his body of work and wanting to know who Bobby Rolls is. Think they give a fuck about Drew Doherty? No. And that's why you have to open every show with your name. So they won't forget. How do you feel about that? Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to go on with the shout out. Uh... Uh, um, Mel and Jeanette, thanks for watching the show. Hey, Mr. Dory. <laughs> How's that for a shoot, dude? That's not a bad shoot. Did we do a good job? I think we did a pretty That's good job. That's probably the best shout out they'll ever get. Probably. Ever. From anyone. Because no who, who, who are they? No one knows what a shoot is anymore, you know? Wrestling fans will know. Yeah. And as soon as we get like, but we're not wrestlers, so they're not gonna come to our shit. Well, no. <laughs> Speaking of our shit, though, we do have a website up. You're goddamn right, we do, Bob. That's a very nice segue that you did there. I'm impressed. Uh, we're getting pretty good at this, folks. Yeah. So, um, I guess that's another reason people know my name is because it's in the fucking URL. 
Which I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want that oh, to happen. Oh wow, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's HTTP colon backslash backslash. Holy shit! What is a what's a colon? The two dots. Two dots. So like two periods, hit period twice. No, that's an ellipse. The colon is uh, this guy right here. The two dots vertically. Where? This guy right here. Oh. Yeah. So it's HTTP that guy colon. Backslash, backslash. What's a backslash? Backslash is uh, this motherfucker right here. It's just a, just a slanty line. Oh, why can't it slant the other way? What's the difference? Um, because that's a forward slash. But why, just make one slash? Make life a lot easier, wouldn't it? I, you know what? I guess, I guess you're right. So anyway, the website is HTTP <laughs> colon <laughs> backslash backslash. <laughs> W dot rolls R O L E S <laughs> dot Wix W I X dot com <sighs> slash cold meal productions. <laughs> right. Right. That is the URL. That is our website. That oh. is where <laughs> that is where you'll be you'll be hearing this. <clears throat> That's where all our videos and pictures are. People are really gonna wanna, really gonna wanna tune in after this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they're really gonna, yeah, totally. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, anything going on with you? What's what's Oh new? man, just uh, ruining the <laughs> show by laughing my ass off. Yeah, you're not staying in character. Not at all. I'm so. <laughs> you can't tell them I have a character. Don't do that. They know it. They Fuck know, cell phones! They know it's a work. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> they? They have to. Wrestling fans know other wrestling fans, dude. Why do you assume that everybody listening to the show is a wrestling fan? What if because they, that's the only people we're friends with. That's so not true. Nobody I know likes wrestling but you. Really? Yes. That's all my friends are, is just wrestling fans, I don't dude. even like talking about how I like it, because people are so repulsed by it. They're so like, oh my god, you watch a bunch of oiled up dudes rolling around. And, you know, you I, see, I, I don't get that. Like, my experience is the complete opposite. How is your... You need more people in your life that fucking bash your balls, Bob. Man, that's I got a lot of positive reinforcement, and I guess that's why I'm so well adjusted. I guess. So what were we talking about? I don't know, but let me ask you a question. Do you think the people like me that listen to this? I don't think they fucking like me. I don't think they like either of us, and I think that's the point. Well, I don't think that, I, like, I just seriously, if I was listening to me, I, like, my voice pisses me off so much. Really? Your voice is, like, really cathartic for me. Like, I enjoy... What does that word mean? Like, it's soothing. It, it makes me feel good. Cathartic equals soothing? It's, it's, it's relaxing, you know? Hmm. It's like a, it's like a good back massage listening to you talk. My voice? Yeah. Like, I get excited on the drive over. Like, the drive to and from your place, it's, it's a great drive. Because you can hear me talk. That's it. Because I'm excited to hear your voice, and, like, there's no one on the road, and I love driving, and I love coming to see you, and, uh... You just want to talk about driving, clearly, I think. No. It, <laughs> it's definitely, like, part of it's driving, and because no one else is around to piss me off, yeah. and because I'm coming to see you. And then on the way home, it's the same thing. But I've already seen you. I'm, I'm, well, we're I'm, friends. You're not a listener. So? I think it, it doesn't matter if you're a friend or a listener to, to appreciate your voice. Because, like, there was, know, a, there was a time when we weren't friends, and I, I still liked your voice. <laughs> you are fucking re you're ridiculous. Why you say that? I don't know. I... I, I, I was out of words. Good. That's the way I like to leave people. Confused. You do that a lot. Yeah. You know what's confusing? What's that? That uh, whole Donald Sterling thing. How is that confusing? It's confusing because the NAACP was about to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's confusing because they awarded him something three times prior. I mean, I understand all of that, but I don't know, man. Like, I, you know, I'm. Uh, I think it's. I think it's fucked up, and in the same vein, um, 
<clears throat> and this is what I told my uh, mother. So my mom was a Paula Deen fan. My mom was like, oh, it's bullshit. What happened to Paula Deen? And I was like, yeah, it's bullshit. But what you have to understand is that this new generation of youngins that have gotten up and, you know, the voting, they're out there doing things like controlling things like they're uh, this this new generation, this new mindset. It's just it has no tolerance for that racist shit. So if you're like basically what it's come down to is like in America now, either you can be racist and you can be afraid to talk about it or you can be racist. And if you let it and if you talk about it or let it slip up at all and you have any sort of like status, everything will be taken away from you. That's where we've come. And that's really, that's not a terrible thing. It's so, not a terrible thing, but... To, um, like, to, like, stop racism and to be, you know, as a society, that against it now, you know, compared to where we were, you know, like... But you also got to take into account the infringing of your First Amendment right. That's very true, but, like, it's also, like, you know, I have a right to not, um, you know, be affiliated with, you know, it's it's like... <laughs> It's like the, the the Paula Deen shit. It's like, you know, Walmart or whatever has a right to not be affiliated with racist people, just like she has a right to be racist or to say racist shit. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's that whole, it's, it works both ways, that whole freedom of speech thing. It's just, it's just like as a collective, because like, I don't know, change like that can only happen collectively because you can't legislate stuff like that because of freedom of speech. But like, it's like as a collective, we are ending all of this bigoty bullshit you know yeah. it's like we talked about the uh, the signs and the uh, the gay people being denied wedding cakes you know that guy was like you know crucified in the media and uh this sterling fella he's another one sterling sterling what is sterling it? sterling yeah and he, he's another one and uh it, it'll continue to go that way it's it's not a bad thing but it's you know for rational thinking people like me and you, it's it's really overdone and it's in your face way too much. Oh, completely. Yeah, but it's not bad. It's not it's not a bad thing to weed out hate. It's never. It's not. So. Especially against a group of people who don't deserve it. Right. And and, and have fought so hard to you know get to where they are now. Totally. And, you know, it's uh, his whole thing like. I don't, I, I I don't know much about the guy. I wish I knew more about the guy. But but I mean, you know, like, I gotta say, like based on what I know about it, it seems like Dick Fear. Dick you know? Fear. Yeah, like he just didn't want other people to know that like his girl left him for like huge black wiener. That's but but that's not the thing. Like she was, she didn't leave him for big black wiener. She was just hanging out with Magic Johnson, at a basketball game, which is completely ridiculous. I mean, you think about Magic Johnson. You think basketball? I he's supposed that, to be I at a basketball game. There was game. some whole side to it, like she was with black people in public on Twitter and Instagram or something like that. Yeah, it, it was. She she tweeted. But it wasn't just with magic, was it? No, it just, was just that one picture. It was what that conversation was about. The conversation, but she had been doing it, right? I don't know if she had a had, had a. a See, track I don't know. Her. I'm pretty fucking sure it's where. But I don't know. continue though. I, but, I didn't know that. You know, yeah, like she posted a picture of her. And Magic Johnson at a Clippers game. And, like, Magic Johnson is supposed to be at basketball games. Like, he works for ESPN, or, you know, one of those sports networks. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's a former, he was one of the greatest basketball players that ever played. And you, you associate Magic Johnson with basketball games. And Donald Sterling, <laughs> and Donald Sterling's like, no, don't bring him to my basketball games. Like, he's a, like, he's a guy that you want in your stadium. like. So it's just really douchey that you would do that. It's, it's, a, it's a complete, like, douchebag move. Like, that's ridiculous. I don't even know where I was going with that, but... That's like, the podcast, man. Just... There's a lot of things we did here that I definitely was not going for, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the air now. Like, what did we do today so far? We did that... Try to do a shout. I, I thought we started out good with the shout out stuff. Yeah. And then we admitted it was a shoot. What did we do right after that? What did we talk about right after that? We talked about them knowing that it's a work. 
I think we talked about women too, and how we only. Oh yeah, we, we did. Have, yeah, we only have two. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're on Donald Sterling. Yeah, like everybody else is. Let's get off Donald Sterling. What do you want to get on? Let's see. How about that Kurt Cobain note? Oh yeah, I hear about that? that. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. His uh, his his wacky wedding vows. Mm hmm. What do you make of that? Well, I want to add. It's probably one of the most truthful statements ever written in human history about Courtney Love. On the other hand, what didn't Kurt Cobain bitch about and write about? Exactly. That's true. So me. I <laughs> That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it too. There's no substance to that. There's no. Right. There's no reason to look into it. Yeah, he bitched about. He, he bitched about everything. If there was any reason to look into it, the police department wouldn't have released it in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's just the way things work. Pretty much. Yeah, that whole thing is. Uh... Do you know anybody who's all about it though? Yeah, I know a lot of people that are all about it. She killed him. No. It's ridiculous. Well, what do they have to say about the note? About what, the new note? Yeah. Oh, I haven't talked to anybody about the new note that thinks that she killed him, but uh, I would imagine they'd be uh, out of things to say. Yeah. What are they saying now? Like, what are their, what are their arguments? Uh, well, a lot of people are like, oh, the heroin dosage, but I know people personally <laughs> that have taken amounts that, you know, should kill you, and they just laid there really messed up and they were fine after like, you know, however many hours. So, you know, I know people that have taken deadly amounts and lived. I know, I, personally. And I'm not bragging. What the fuck? I, I, I sounded so proud of that. Didn't I? I'm not bragging at all. That's terrible. I should not know anyone. You know what, dude? If I know you and you've done that, I'm gonna whoop. No, I'm just joking. But, uh, yeah, so I know people personally have done that. That's one of their big core arguments. It's like, oh, there's no way that someone could have, like, shot that much heroin and then, you know, like, loaded up a shotgun and then put it in their face and shoot it, especially when the shotgun's so goddamn long. And then, you know, it's like he's having the pistol. And <laughs> it's like, you know, they, they bring out measurements of the shotgun, measurements of his body. Oh, he would have had to, he would have had to hit the trigger with his toes. And they, they say stupid shit like that. And, um, yeah. There's no way someone with that much heroin would have been alive long enough to pull a trigger and shut him. <laughs> as soon as that was injected into his vein, he went past down. I like Courtney Love, dude. I like Courtney Love a lot. Yeah? Definitely one of the coolest uh, female performers ever, in my opinion. Awesome. Awesome to watch. Great show. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. I know a couple of her songs on the guitar. I've learned me some Courtney Love, people. I've learned me some Courtney Love. I like that. I like that. I like that you've that you've learned some Courtney Love. And you, you have to. Yeah. Unless unless you're a fucking dickless queer. You got to. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, we're all talk about a, talking about abolishing hate and racism. And yeah, then I yeah. say that. <laughs> Dick was queer. It doesn't matter, though. It doesn't matter. Who am I? It doesn't matter unless you're somebody. Yeah. That's why I don't say stuff like that. What do you mean? Oh, because you're... Yeah, because you're somebody. And I have to keep saying my name. You right? have to keep saying your name. Right. People know. Yeah. You have completely torn down the fourth wall in that work, by the way. Like, how is that a work anymore? How can I keep doing my Paul Heyman rip-off routine now that you've been all like, oh... Like, like, it can't be done. You don't think that people are going to listen to that? Like, in our, in our first two shows and be like, dude, he's totally ripping off Paul Heyman. But that's what I'm trying, that's what I was trying to explain to you. How, how many minutes are we? 1925, at least four minutes ago, I was like, dude, no wrestling fans are fucking listening to this show. That's what I was trying to tell you. You keep talking about wrestling fans. Like, They're totally no, listening. That's, dude. dude as much as we like reference wrestling, we've re we've referenced wrestling in like two shows now. This yeah, yeah. yeah. There's three. Uh, yeah, th this is only the third episode, and we've done like this. 
This is probably the most, by the way, we've ever referenced it. And it's something I'm trying to avoid. Why? We love wrestling. Because people don't care about it. Before before we, we it's before we turn it's this It's fake. It's it, people don't care. I know me and you know that it's cool, but people just don't give a shit. I don't know. I feel like more and more people are starting to give a shit. I bleh. especially people our age. You <laughs> Really? Yeah. I don't know about that. Bray Wyatt. People our age were into it when we were twelve, though. I know, but I'm just <laughs> saying, like, <laughs> like there's the, there's the, there are those group of people who grew up watching it, and then they just stopped and they hated wrestling and it was the cool thing to do. But now they're like they're getting older and they're they're getting back into it. Like there's totally like tons and tons of like Facebook groups, and like, like people tweet about it like hardcore like it is true like they uh, when, when when they broke the streak that was the number one fucking worldwide tweet yeah and like that's insane as they're doing it as they're doing raw like those are the number number one tweets worldwide is like stuff that's going on on raw like wrestling's popular again dude I guess so yeah. and I think it's because they break the fourth wall so much now like people know it's a word but it's but but it's more performance art now than it ever has been. So far. So far. Yeah. Like, do you think Bray Wyatt would be over right now if it wasn't for, like, people who were 27 years old and love wrestling? Yeah, it's very true. So, there's my point. That's a very well-made point. Yeah, so that's why we should talk about wrestling. I mean, we just watched <laughs> that... We just watched that epic match, that... That ladder match that wasn't supposed to be a ladder match ladies between and Edge and Eddie Guerrero. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Doherty, and I am a representative of Cold Meal Productions, and I did not want to talk about wrestling tonight. But from this point on, me and my client, William Robert Rolls III, will be talking about wrestling. What do you, gotta, what do you want to talk about? Here it is. Is, is this become a wrestling show? This has become a wrestling show. Today. 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 Today's, today's the wrestling show. Why not? You just won't get off it. I can't. I'm so excited. Like, that match got me pumped up about wrestling. That was a great match. That was a great match. And they did it on SmackDown. They did it on SmackDown. You people don't even know what we're talking about because you're not cool enough to look for cool shit like me and Bob do. Me and Bob are writers. We, It's our job, really. Yeah. It's our job to find cool shit and talk it is, about it. It is, and today we found Eddie Guerrero versus Edge from SmackDown, and what the fuck year was that from? I don't even know. It doesn't even say. Yeah, it doesn't even say what year that's from, but I mean, like, Edge <laughs> still in. It, it, you know, they're so they're so young. It, it's awesome. It's 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 great. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> These are two grown men that have made me as a grown man cry. As a grown man cry. That's another point. That's another good point. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero's death is one of the uh, few times that I weep like a bitch watching, watching Raw. And Edge's, was, uh, Edge's yeah. farewell speech. Edge's farewell speech also. Well, I didn't watch that live. You, like, you told me to watch that. Yeah. And I was in a I room. watched that alone thinking, oh, dude, I'm going to watch the speech. And it was, it, it, people, if you haven't seen Edge's farewell speech and you need, like, a good cry to get it out of your system... Telling you right now, Ed, <laughs> episode one, steroid league. Episode two, North Korean reaction videos. Episode three, write your congressman. Make it happen. Let's get some Edge farewell speech spots in commercials on te on television, dude. Let's let's make that happen. Don't take it upon yourself to watch it. That's that's too easy. Make everybody watch it. Everybody has to see Edge's farewell speech. Everybody has to see it. Make it happen. That's three, dude. That's I was three missions I've given them. They're all very, very good missions. They really are. I'm not... And missions they're selfless. The they don't... They, they, you know what? They're non-profit missions, dude. Like, yeah. They don't bring me anything. Yeah. I just think they should be happening. You're, and you're right. <laughs> dude, at, I, was in a, I was in a room with other like grown men crying, watching it live. Yeah, I can't imagine if that. If it I was, was so shocking. It, it was it was out of nowhere too. Like we yeah. had no idea. Like Edge just came out and he was already crying, and like. It was it was just it was thick. Yeah. It was heavy. That it really was too. It really was. So I watched I, I watched it on YouTube, but I did not watch that live. Uh, the um, oh, I'm trying to think of other times it was like real. 
Then we're going to show shit. I don't know. Like, how much do you remember about the Eddie Guerrero show? I don't remember much. That was that was a long time ago. Really? Yeah. I don't know. What do you remember about the Eddie Guerrero show? It was deep. They drove his car out. Yeah. Parked it on the fucking ramp. Had the belt, like, laid across the car. Fucking, they did the ten bell thing. And, ugh. Fucking everybody all night doing interviews. <laughs> every match, everybody came out in Eddie gear and. Every match just like, you know, they were they, they were okay matches, but they just weren't good because nobody was in the mood. Yeah. And it was just a real downer. And it's all the announcers would talk about. And it was a bummer. Yeah. Another, another, another real emotional thing just happened recently, too, is uh, Jake the Snake's Hall of, Hall of Fame induction. That'll Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Doherty of Cold Meal Productions, alongside William Robert Rolls III. I would like to go on the record right now as to saying that we cried together. Together, watching it, yeah. Watching Jake the Snake induct him. That, that was good. That was a good speech. That was excellent. Why don't people like wrestling, dude? I, it's all the gay shit about it. There's nothing gay about wrestling. Not, not if you get past it, but when you first take a look at it, it looks so gay. It's a bunch of dudes all oiled up and shaved in their underwear, holding microphones, bitching about stuff. I mean, it's the gayest fucking thing ever when you first... You're just like, dude, what? this guy can't fucking act, you know, and... Because people don't understand that, like, you know, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an always changing thing, you know, like... Mm -hmm. Guys will do a bad promo, do a good promo. Guys just suck on the mic, and then the company realizes that and takes them off. But, I mean, people just come in, you know, and then they, they, they just look at it, and they don't know what they're seeing. And it's, it's definitely something that you have to get invested in. It really is. It's like, you know, Star Trek, you know? It's like it's like, it, it, it's, it's like Lord of the Rings. It's like shit like that. It's like you got to fucking got to not hang out with people for a while. Yeah. And figure some shit out. If you're gonna if you're gonna become a Lord of the Rings Star Trek wrestling guy. You know what I yeah. mean? It's just the way that works. Yeah, I don't know. What else did we talk about? We, we we didn't prepare. Not really. Anything. I feel like it's a, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a lot of bullshit. I hope I'm not breaking the fourth wall here when I say that this was just a lot of uh, bullshitting. I mean, it's not really a inner would you say it was entertaining? I wouldn't say it was probably a little entertaining. I was entertained doing it. Yeah, I was entertained doing it too, but we're really self-indulgent. Yeah. I, I, like, to be honest with you, like, I, I didn't even really want to do it. Like, I was excited for a little bit, but then we started watching wrestling, and I just, I was just like, man, we just need to watch more wrestling. Let's just I do know, this and get we, out of the yeah, way. But we gotta, you gotta make your people. My name is Drew Doherty. I am a representative of Cold Meal Productions. I am sitting here alongside my co-representative of Cold Meal Productions, William Robert Rolls III. Bobby Three Posts. <laughs> and I would like to go on the record as saying that we didn't even want to do this, but we did. We did it for you. I mean. But we did. And here's, you know, Mark Marin has an excellent quote that fits my whole fucking life. Maybe it fits your life, too. Uh, fucking three, four, two listeners that we fucking got, whatever. I don't prepare anything for anything. You people that plan everything out, you know, you're such fucking gutless pussies, you know. I don't plan anything for anything. Because if I just do it and fail, I didn't plan anything. Fuck it. Yeah. Who cares? But if I do it and I succeed, I am a fucking genius. Mark Marin, ladies and gentlemen, uh, stand-up comic and my personal motivational speaker. He also has his own TV show and his own podcast. He has a podcast? Yeah. Everybody. We're going up against Mark Marin. Everyone's got a fucking podcast these We're days. going down, dude. We're up against Mark fucking Marin. Yeah. What are we going to do? 
I don't know. I guess we could just talk about wrestling some more. But we we weren't even that good at that. We ran out of steam with that. I, I guess... just wasn't feeling it. And I keep telling you why. Because people don't care about it. Mark Maron's not talking about wrestling. That's my point. Yeah. We need to figure out what Mark Maron's talking about. We need to hit the drawing board. <laughs> and we need to come back next week. <laughs> Whole new ball game, people. You know what? I say we scrap this podcast, and I say we scrap videos and all the. I say we start start new, start fresh, ripping off Mark Marin. Ripping off Mark Marin. Let's do it. I'm ready. That's the end. No more wrestling. No more. No more cold meal productions. We're probably going to rename it after we do all this. What's what we call it? I don't know. Mark Marrow. Mark Marrow Productions. Mark- <laughs> Again with the wrestling. I, I can't get you off can't of it. You I, can't stop. You can't stop. I got a problem, dude. I don't know. What would we call it? If we weren't cold meal... We'd probably just kill ourselves, wouldn't we? What, if we couldn't have that name? If we couldn't be cold meal. If we couldn't be cold meal. What else is there to live for? I mean, you could you could aspire to be a hot meal. We could... No. I mean, we were already hot meals. How do you think we got cold? Touche. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh that's the kind of shit, ladies and gentlemen, you just can't respond to when you're doing improv because he, he he backs you into a corner on that one. Yeah. And you're surrounded by logic. Yeah. Lo- lo- logic and improv. Are, no, no. It's all about saying yes. <laughs> it's all about saying yes. All I do is say no. That's true. I'm not a good improv comedian. You don't think so? No. All I do is say no. I don't even give a reason why. Yeah, but, like, some dumb bitch once told me, um, there has to be a conflict or there's no show. That's not how improv works, though. Hmm. I thought improv was anything you just do. Well, yeah, but, I mean, traditionally, you know. See these college fucking pompous motherfuckers, man. I just can't. Man, I, I just can't put up with you college people. I didn't even graduate. And you're like, traditionally, yeah. I just can't do it. I don't understand. Why are you, why are you, why are you hating on me and my education? <laughs> it's not even an edu- it, I did two years at a community college, didn't even get a degree. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this man is downplaying it. So hard. Like, community college is like high school light, dude. <laughs> <laughs> high school what? Light. High school light? It's the light beer of of education, you know? Like, it's, it's like high school, except, like, there's even less pressure to do well. That's crazy. Because it's fucking community college. Hmm. And, and not only that, but you're going there with people that you... Graduated high school with. Like, like you can't swing a dead cat without it's hitting some dude you went to high school with. Well, I prefer to think of it as a really pompous thing, and I'm going to continue to do so. Well, you're wrong. As I'm you... wrong about so many fucking things, but it really hasn't made much effect on my life, Bobby. Really? Yeah. You... you... What if you were right about stuff like where you don't? I'm really... right about a lot of other things, but I'm wrong about a lot of other things too. Well, what if you were right about everything? Like, where would you be right now? If I was right about everything, man, what what what, what kind of question is that? I don't know. I I don't even like. How do I answer that question? If I was right about everything, first of all, I'd be the president. No, you wouldn't. Straight up, because I... That's not right about everything. I think I should be president, and if I think it, and I'm right about everything, then... Wow, dude. See? Just blew my mind. Well, if I'm right about everything, then I'm the president. Totally right about that. So right off the bat, I'm the president, and then it's just going to be a fucking onslaught of madness. Like, it's just... It's going to be terrible. I guess if you... It's going to be like, no one's allowed to walk around... (laughs) I was about to, man, I, well, eh, it'd be no. like North Korea. It wouldn't be that bad. 
That would probably be pretty bad. It wouldn't be that bad. It, it, it would be pretty bad for a lot of people, though. I'd be, like, like law number one, yo, you're not allowed to walk around and hate black people and listen to rap. If you listen to rap and you have a negative stance on black people, you're going to the electric chair with no trial. <laughs> like, that is fucking number one. Number two that I would do is if you are against gay marriage, then we are going to put your name on a website and it's going to, the website is going to, like, like it, 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 it's a crazy law. Listen to this. Okay. It's a crazy law. But, like, people who hate gays, what's their biggest fucking fear? Being called gay, right? Yeah. So if you stand against gays publicly in the United States under Drew's administration, and when I'm president, mm -hmm. then I'm going to take your name and I'm going to put it on a website. And it's going to say all of these men are openly homosexual, and it's going to have your name and your picture on a website, everyone in the country. Who's a, who stands against gay marriage? You're allowed to stand against it. That's fine. But, but you're going you, on the site. But you're going on the site as an open homosexual. I know. Another thing. Uh, 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 everyone wants to carry a gun. That's fine. Uh, majority of the people that want to carry guns are gun nut retard rednecks. I want to carry a gun. You're not, but hear me out. And they all want, and, and again, it's the same demographic that hates gays, so my, my solution was to do the gun thing, conceal and carry, is you can carry whatever gun you want, but there has to be of equal size and weight a dildo constantly vibrating attached to it. <laughs> Carry it in a holster all you want, but peep, there has to be a dildo just fucking hanging there while you walk through Walmart. <laughs> Straight up. Now that's a law right there. Is it not? <laughs> but why? Because why it just dildo? solves so many fucking problems. Because if you really want to go through all that, do it. And if, and, and if you have a problem with... <laughs> If you have a problem with walking around with a dildo on you, then shut the fuck up and keep your gun at home. Solves all problems. Do you think the criminals are going to put dildos on their guns? <laughs> <laughs> that puts us oh, at a disadvantage. That really does. It really does, but it just, it, you know, I, that, that, those are old fucking, that's I an old. I love that argument, though. That's, like, I'm a gun guy, but I even, even I like that. Even you like that argument? I like that argument. It's I just, funny. It's just, you know, a while ago... And especially when you're thinking about guns with dildos on them. <laughs> it's hilarious, right? <laughs> but no, a while ago I came up with that rant, and it was going to be a series of skits of a uh, guy who's running for office, and he's ultra super liberal, and he has a reverse psychology, like, solution to every problem. You know, which is like, if you're against immigrants, guess what? You have to go live in another country where you can't fucking speak English. And you have to figure out how to make a living at a job and send the money back to your family in America so they can eat. That's what you got to do if you're against immigration. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, that was like his stance on everything. But that's another thing I would do as president, honestly. Yeah. If you're like... Fuck Mexicans taking jobs and dirt, and you're making a you're making a lot of noise and being a pain in the ass about your views. Absolutely, yes. We're sending you to another country for two years to live where you don't speak the language and you have to figure out how to get a job. And eat. Then you can come back to America and look at Mexicans. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. What's another one? What's another? One? We'll, we'll just start. We'll start. Solving problems, right? I just now. want to hear more about the Drew Doherty administration. Like, this is good. You like Th this? This is, this is, yeah, this is gold, dude. This is juicy? This is juicy. I like this. I like it. What are more problems? G give, give me some problems that are facing, facing America. But don't say the economy because I'm the president. That's not on me. <laughs> That's not on me. Healthcare. Healthcare? Give us some healthcare. If you get fucked up legitimately, then you get fixed. Plain and simple. That's it. That's it? That's it. How do you pay the doctors? How do you pay the doctors? We'll pay the doctors. We will pay the... You know, for... Okay, I'll tell you what. All the insurance companies, we own them now. We'll pay the doctors. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, energy, energy crisis. The energy crisis. Okay, I tell you what. If you want to drive a, a vehicle that is just just just, just, just out, okay. Let, well, let's start with the whole oil thing. If you're gonna be an asshole and drive around fucking you know blazers and fucking shit like that, you gotta have a dildo. 
<laughs> hanging off the bumper. No, I'm just joking. I have no idea what the energy drink is. <laughs> I have no idea. It's going to involve dildos. If you want, if you want to put the, what are those, the windmills? You got to have a windmill of dildos. If you want wind, no, I'm just joking. Dude, you are going <laughs> to, you are putting the dildo companies over so hard right now. <laughs> Yeah, dude, they they will vote for me for sure. Yeah, like the, <laughs> they're like holy shit. But uh, yeah, the energy crisis. I don't know. Is it is it even a crisis when we're wasting so goddamn much fucking energy? I say let's waste more. Then it becomes a crisis, and then we'll learn the value of throwing words around, like crisis. Dude, it, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. How is it so bad? Because we're running out of shit and like. But we're still wasting so yeah. fucking hard. No one's coming to your door and fucking making sure that your water's off. It's not that bad. I guess you're right. You know, I mean, how much of that is actually really fucking bad, and how much of that is just you know they want you to think it's bad so that you continue to pay a lot for gas because you think it's rare. Mm. Mm. I'm a pizza guy, dude. I think a lot about gas. <laughs> <laughs> right, used to be a pizza guy. I don't know though, Bob. I mean, I gotta be straight with you. We're forty-one. I'm I, I'm out of shit. Out of shit to say? Yeah. I want to watch wrestling? All right, let's watch some wrestling, dude. This has been uh, this has been Bob and Drew, and this has been Bob and Drew are terrible people. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Go fuck yourself.